lecture. So our lecture for today, yan, ito na po yung last lecture natin for General Physics 1. This is Momentum, Impulse, and Collision. Okay, so ngayon, um, pag-aaralan natin yung momentum ng isang bagay. Kailan nagkakaroon ng momentum? Ano ang relationship ni impulse kay momentum? And ano ang nangyayari kapag nagsalpukat at nagbanggaan ng mga objects? Okay, so our learning competencies for this day are as follows. So meron tayong anim na learning competencies na discuss for this day. Okay? Uh, warning may start talking about physics. So, this girl would start talking about uh, physics. Okay? So, now let's start with center of mass. Okay? Center of mass is um, also known as center of gravity. Okay? The center of an object weighted by the mass. Okay? Lahat ng may mass and lahat ng object na may effect ng gravity, kailangan natin kunin yung center niyan. Okay? The position vector of the center of the mass for a collection of n pieces, each with mass mi, is given the expression this one. Okay? Where m, okay, is equals to mass and of or if we have a system, the entire collection of mass. Meaning, the summation of all masses uh, starting from the first object until the last object. Okay? And R here, the R vector here or the position vector here is the position of the object or the position of the center of mass of each piece. Okay? So, yung center of mass, dinefine lang natin siya. Very high polluting yung pagkakadefine dito. Pero ito lang naman ay kung paano natin ibabalance yung object. For example, nabuboard ka na dyan sa kinauupuan mo, may hawak kang um, notebook. Okay? Gusto mo siyang ibalance sa top ng daliri mo. Pwede mo pong gawin yun. Okay? So, using the concepts of center of mass. Kung meron kang ano dyan, uh, water bottle. Okay? If you flip mo yung water bottle mo. Okay? So, para mas mag-successful ka sa flip the uh, bottle challenge. Okay? You have to calculate the center of mass of that um, bottle. Pero, um, hindi na natin siya nagagawa kasi... Uh, matagal mag-compute. Okay? So, um, when center of mass, yung pinaka-basic example in real life situation is yung CISO. Okay? Lahat naman tayo siguro naka-experience ng pagsisiso. Ano? So, um, but what happens if we have two different um, unequal or we have two different objects with unequal masses. So, ang tendency ng CISO, okay, pag pareho sila ng position dun sa beam natin, okay, dun sa balance beam natin, okay, so ang tendency, kung sino yung mas mabigat, okay, mapupul niya pataas yung mas magaan. Okay, for example, we have a bus here and we have a race car. So, mas, mag mas mabigat yung bus in this situation. So, ang tendency, kapag pareho sila ng position, yung bus, yung nasa ibabaw, or sorry, na, yung nasa uh, closer to the ground, and then yung uh, race car nasa taas na part. Okay? So, how do we compute for um, ano yung paano natin mababalance yung uh, paano natin sila ma mababalance yung dalawang object na may unequal masses para mag-straight line yung beam natin. Okay? So, we have to change the position of the greater object with uh, of the position of the object with greater mass. Okay? So both masses and their position, kasi yung position ng object natin affects whether or not the CISO is balanced. Okay? So ano yung mapapansin nyo dito? Ano yung naging change from the bus to the race car? Um, the... Tandaan po natin, lahat po ng mas heavier yung mass. Okay? Para, uh, uh, or mas malaki yung greater amount yung mass ng object na yun. Dap, uh, para ma-balance natin siya, uh, the object which has the greater, greater mass must be nearer to the fulcrum which has the center of gravity or the center of um, mass nung pinaka-beam natin. Okay? So, uh, 
uh, mathematically we could uh, express balancing an equal mass through this one. Our mass one is our boss. The distance one is yung from fulcrum dun sa boss, center ng boss. Okay? So, given M1, D1, okay, in order for us to have equal, equal, um, uh, effect of gravity, okay, so, the M2, uh, should equate it to the value of the center of a mass of the, uh, the object or particle number 2, which gives us M1D1 is equals to M2D2. Okay? So, yeah. Um, what if, um, what happens if there are many things we are trying to balance in a CISO? Okay? So, paano pagka nagkaroon ka na ng uh, may dumagdag kang dalawang kalaro tapos gusto din nilang mag CISO? Ano yung gagawin nyo para magkaroon kayo ng balance um, or magpantay yung uh, posisyon nyo? Okay? So, ang una natin kailangan gawin dyan is we fix our origin and coordinate system. Saan po ba natin ilalagay yung fulcrum natin kapag meron tayong uh, system which has uh, two or more masses? Okay? So, and then after we plot our objects in the coordinate system, we have to, uh, in order for us to balance two objects, we need this formula. Okay, M1D1 is equals to M2D2 kapag dalawang objects. Or kapag nilipat natin yung isa, M1D1 minus M2D2 is equals to zero. For a system with N, Meaning, two or more objects, we need this equation. M1D1 minus X bar. X bar here is the position of our fulcrum. Okay? So, X bar dito yung position ng fulcrum natin. Okay? And then so on. M2D2 minus X bar and so on. Hanggang makarating tayo hanggang dun sa last object. Okay, is equals to zero. So now we solve for x bar. So kailangan natin kasi is yung location ng fulcrum sa beam. Okay, para mabalance natin siya. Okay, which leads us to the following set of calculations applying algebra. Okay, and finally, in order for us to find x bar, um, it is equal to this equation. So mass times the distance 1, M2D2, M3D3, M, uh, M3 and so on hanggang M, N, D, N, over mass 1 plus mass 2 plus mass ng tat, pangatlong object and so on. Or simply, we can uh, express this um, uh, equation. Nasaan na yun? Okay, using yung binigay natin kanina, which is this equation. 1 over m, yung uh, distance ng center of mass is equals to 1 over m, summation of n uh, from uh, i is equals to 1, m i r i. Okay? So, dito lang po yun. Ito lang po yung solving or... Um, derivation ng equation na yun kanina. Okay? So, ito yung pinahabang expression nung equation kanina. Okay? So, yung center of mass, nakadepende din po yan sa location ng axis niya. Okay? So, hindi tayo pwedeng magkapalit-palit ng axis. Okay? Yung center of mass, um, unique lang po siya sa isang axis. So, kailangan mo munang kunin yung center of mass sa x-axis, center of mass sa y-axis, and center of mass sa z-axis. Okay? So, given the equation, yung kanina, ito pala yun, 1 over m is uh, multiplied by the summation of m sub n times x sub n kapag x-axis. y sub n naman kapag ka, uh, center of mass sa y-axis. And z sub n kapag center of mass sa z-axis. 
Okay? So, the center of mass is equal to M1, M2, and so on. Or, uh, summation of ML. Okay? So, so dito parang ino na lang natin na uh, define lang natin a center of mass in different axes and how we get or how we derive a center of mass uh, um, if we have two or more particles or object. Okay? So, yun na tayo sa main ano natin. Uh, main topic which is momentum, impulse, and collision. Okay? So, meron lang kayo mga kailangan tandaan dito. Uh, momentum of a particle depends on its mass and velocity. So, kaya meron po tayong equation na P. Okay? So, yun yung uh, expression for momentum. P is equals to mass times velocity. The direction of the momentum is the same as the velocity. Okay, since uh, kailangan i-consider yung direction ni momentum, momentum is basically a vector quantity. Okay, the unit of momentum, kilogram meters per second. Wala po siyang other, other units. Ito lang po. Parang pinag-multiply lang natin kasi yung uh, uh, equation ng mass, equation ng velocity, or sa unit ng velocity rather. Particular value of momentum can be achieved in different ways. So, pwede po siyang meron kang small moving, small mass moving at a high velocity. Okay? So, sa momentum kasi pagka, pag liit ng mass, okay? Pag bilis nung pwedeng maging velocity niya or pwede na namang a large mass moving at a low velocity. Ano yung example nitong dalawang situations na to? Yan, meron tayong huge ship moving at a small velocity. So, the moment, momentum of that ship is equals to m times v. Okay, high velocity. Uh, bullet. Di ba, maliit lang yung bullet. So, smaller lang din yung mass niya. P is equals to m times v. Okay? So, uh, for a system of particles, so the total momentum is the summation of uh, momentum. Uh, nung individual particles na yon, given P, gawin natin yung PT for total momentum, hindi po performance test, ha? total momentum is equals to P1, P2 plus P3, and so on. Or, or the summation of M and VN. Along with uh, center of mass V, okay, kunwari given ka ng velocity, or hanapin mo yung center of mass ng velocity na yon, uh, is equals to 1 over M, Summation of M and V N. Okay? Or uh, momentum P is equals to M V C M. Okay? So, next we have impulse. So, yung impulse, ito ay yung um, effect ng force sa movement ng ating object over a given period of time. From Newton's second law, given the equation, summation of F is equals to M A. Okay? So, ang A natin, alam natin na ang uh, definition natin ng acceleration is the change in velocity over change in time. Okay? So, kapag sinabsitute natin yan dito, okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng equation na M times delta V over delta T. Okay? Pag minultiply natin yung M, okay? So, magkakaroon na tayo ng M delta V or delta MV times Delta T. So, ano yung napapansin nyo dito sa equation or sa expression na to? Okay. This is the equation of momentum. Okay. Momentum is given the equation P is equals to uh, M delta V. Okay. So, ito yon, Ito yon. So, kaya pwede natin siyang isimplify as delta P over Delta T. Okay? So, is equals to summation of F. Tapos, um, kapag minultiply natin both sides by delta T, so makakancel po ito. So, delta P or change in momentum is equals to the summation of um, the force, rather F net, Multiply by 
the change in time. Okay, this expression is what we call impulse momentum theorem. Okay, the impulse momentum theorem states that we can get the value of the impulse when the momentum of the object is changing. Okay, meaning um, impulse is equals to the change in momentum of that object or F times delta T or the force given at a uh, force, applied force over a given period of time. Okay? Or rather the force applied on uh, with respect to time. Okay? Multiplication nga pala. So any question regarding impulse momentum theorem? Okay? So ang momentum, ang nakaka-affect lang po kay momentum is yung mass ng object and its velocity. Kay impulse naman, it is the change in velocity and ang nakaka-affect nakaka-affect to kay impulse is yung force na in-apply mo multiply by the time. How long did you apply that force? Okay? So, ano natin? Ito ay impulse ha. Impulse momentum theorem. I-apply natin on a um, situation. So, meron tayong equation ng P is equals to M delta V. Kay impulse naman, impulse is equals to delta P is equals to uh, F delta T. Okay? Kapag total, um, total momentum is equals to P1 plus P2 plus uh, Pn. Okay? Pn. Okay? And then, or summation of uh, Pt is equals to summation of MN, PN. Okay? So, apply natin to. Mag-start muna tayo kay momentum. Meron tayong object, okay? 6 kilograms. Moving at a speed of 5 meters per second. What is the uh, momentum of the object? Or the ball, rather? What do you think, um, Miss Caparas? What would be the value of the momentum? Okay, very good. So, ipagmumultiply lang natin yan. 6 times 5. So, ang value ng momentum natin is 30 kilogram meters per second. Okay, this should be positive. Bakit positive? Kasi papunta sa positive x-axis yung velocity natin. Okay, so, or pwede natin gawin na towards the, or directed towards the, uh, the rightward uh, direction. Okay? So, what if ito, yung particle 2 natin? So, 4 kg. Tapos, um, 7 meters per second. Okay? What would be the momentum of particle 2? Very good. Negative 28 meter uh, kilogram meters per second. Okay, bakit po negative? Kasi papunta na po siya sa negative part ng ating Cartesian plane. Okay? So, what if itong P1, uh, nagkaroon pa tayo ng P3. Okay? Okay, P3 natin, or rather particle 3, is ito. So, yung particle 3 natin is 5 kilograms. 5 kg moving at a speed towards this direction of um, 2 meters per second. Okay? So, ito yung P3 natin. What would be the value of um, P1 and P3? What would be the total momentum of P1 and P3? Okay, very good. So, bakit po naging positive 40 kg meters per second? We need to find... The summation of the uh, momentum nung, nung dalawang system na yun, okay? So, given M1 V1 plus M2 V2, okay? We need to ha uh, find the summation of P1 and P3. This is P3 rather. So, M3 V3, okay? 
So, nakuha na natin yung sa M1, which is 30. So, ang M3 ay 5 times 2. Okay. So, bakit po sila pinag-add? Bakit naging 40? Kasi they are in the same direction. So, kilogram meters per second. Okay. What if um, ang system naman na hinahanap natin is P3 or P2 and P3? What would be PT? The final or the total momentum of P2 and P3. Okay, very good. So, um, negative 18 kilogram meters per second. Why? Kasi kun, ag, again, kunin ulit natin yung summation no, um system na hinahanapan natin. Alam natin na yung P2 negative 28. Si P3, base dito, positive 10. Okay? So, pag pinag-add natin sila, since mas malaki yung value ng P2 natin, our momentum or the momentum of this uh, two sis or two object is negative 18 kilogram meters per second. Okay? So, dito i-apply ulit natin yung concepts natin of uh, vector. So, pag magkaiba sila, kunwari papunta sa taas yung isa, papunta sa kaliwa yung isa, so, kukunin mo ulit yung Pythagorean theorem, so katawa and such. Okay? Any question regard, uh, regarding momentum? Ganun lang po siya kadali. Kukunin mo lang yung individual momentum ng object mo and para makuha mo yung total momentum, uh, you have to get the summation of all momentums acting or uh, present doon sa system. Okay? So, now let's uh, move with impulse. So, yung impulse natin, so, yung impulse natin, given tayo nito, okay? Sabi natin, dinefine natin kanina that impulse is the change in momentum of that particle. It is also equal to the um, force applied uh, for given time, okay? So, Kung ang hinahanap po natin ay force, if we are going to find the F net based from momentum and time, so pwedeng um, uh, divide both sides lang natin kay change in time. So mag magkakaroon po tayo ng equation na delta P over delta T or F net sa calculus equals sa D P over DP. Hala, nagkaroon na ng calculus. So, um, para makuha mo yung value ng F or force mo with respect to time or in terms of time, you have to get the uh, first derivative derivative. Okay, you have to get the first derivative of um, the momentum, okay, with respect to time. Okay, P bar T. Okay, so first derivative ni momentum with respect to time. So, mag arrive po yan sa value ng uh, force. Or if you are going to get this graphically, okay, when you have a um, momentum versus uh, time graph, Okay, yung area under the curve ng uh, mabubuo mong change or varying amount of momentum with respect to time. So, para makuha mo yon the average uh, moment or the average, yes, the average momentum with respect to the time, yung value nun, the area under the curve is the force. Okay? So, Okay, now let's move on with the sample problems. Yung para ma-apply na naman natin siya mathematically. Okay, meron tayong 10 kilogram box which is at rest at a frictionless surface. It has a constant force of 20 newtons and it is applied for 5 seconds. What is the impulse acting on the block? What is the change in momentum of the block? And what is the final speed of the block? Okay, so illustrate natin. This is our 10 kilogram uh, block 
which is at rest and we apply a constant force of 20 newtons. So positive, gawin ko na lang siyang papunta sa right. And applied for T is equals to 5 seconds. What is the impulse? So impulse is given as the equation F multiplies uh, multiply by delta T. So 10, uh, sorry, 120 rather. 20 applied force, newton, multiply by the time. So, yung time natin, since, af, since at rest yung object natin, kasi diba, given tayo ng delta T, ng Tf minus T naught. Okay, since at rest yung object natin, so the initial time would be equals to zero. So, delta T is also equals to Tf. So, yung final time yung gagamitin natin dito, which is... 5 seconds. So, the impulse of the object is 100 newton second. Okay? Walang ibang, equi walang ibang um, unit for impulse, ha? Newton per second. Newton second lang. NS. Okay? Next, letter B, what is the change in momentum of the block? Okay, what would, what would be, what do you think would be the value of the change in momentum? Okay, based from our discussion, ano yung value ng momentum, change in momentum dito, given the impulse, 100 newton second. Ang answer din po is 100 newton second. Okay, so bakit po 100 newton second din yung change in momentum? Bakit po same value ng ating impulse? Okay, we um, define impulse as... Uh, change in, oh sorry, uh, force, okay? Force times change in time. Force times change in time or as we apply force uh, over a given period of time, it creates us or it tells us the change in momentum. So meaning, impulse is also the amount of change given by an object when it is or when it has a varying momentum. Okay? That's why we have the same value of um, impulse which is 100 newton second. Okay? Again, tandaan po lagi na kapag nagbabago yung uh, momentum natin or the delta, delta P, it is also the amount of impulse exerted by the object. Okay? And then last, we have, last question, what is the final speed of the block? We have two ways here in calculating the final speed. Pwedeng in terms of um, impulse momentum theorem or in terms of kin uh, kinematics. So, gawin natin both. Gawin muna natin yung sa impulse uh, momentum theorem. Okay? So, Balik tayo dito sa equation na to, F delta T is equals to delta P. Okay? F delta T is equals to mass times delta V. Kasi yung momentum natin, equation niya is M delta V, di ba? F delta T is equals to TF minus T naught. It's equals to M. Ang delta V natin is VF minus V naught. Okay? So, since at rest yung object natin, yung block, the initial instances are all, uh, uh, all equal to zero. So, T naught and V naught is equal to zero. Substitute natin yung mga values. Yung F natin is 20. Multiply by 5. Yung mass natin ay 10. Multiply by VF. Okay? Divide both sides by 10. 100 divided by 10. VF is equal to... 10 meters per second. Okay? So, ma'am, paano naman po yung sa kinematic? So, dito na lang natin ilagay yung step 2 or uh, way 2, technique 2. From um, Newton's second law, F is equals to MA, di ba? So, ang una natin kailangan hanapin yung acceleration. So, given tayo ng force na 20, yung mass natin ay 10, so, mahanap natin yung acceleration. Okay? Divide both sides by 10. Acceleration is equals to 2 meters per second squared. So, meron na tayong acceleration. Meron tayong 
um, time, given tayo ng time, alam natin ang initial velocity is equals to zero, hinahanap natin is final velocity. So, ano yung equation? Pwede natin gamitin yung equation na Vf is equals to V0 plus AT. Okay, cancel na to. Vf is equal to 5, oh, sorry, 2 muna para yung acceleration. Pwede na marito, 2 times 5. Okay, Vf is equals to 10 meters per second. Okay, so any question regarding this, this one, clarifications, mga kapatid from Tesla. So kung wala, let's move on with the second problem. Yan. Calculate the impulse of each situation. Constant force of 100 newton acts on the block for 10 seconds. Meron tayong variable force increases from 0 to 10. Uh, rate of 10 seconds. Uh, variable force again, 50 newtons to 100 newton at a constant rate of 10 seconds. Okay, yung impulse natin dito ay... So, A muna tayo, di ba? F is equal to change in time. Again, wala namang sinabing nagbago yung time. So, kunin lang natin yung 10 seconds. Force given tayo, 100 newton. So, this is just simply 100 times 10 or 1,000 in S. Okay? Next, eto di tayo may question. Paano ma'am? Kapag varying yung ating force, Okay? Ang alam lang natin, ang pwedeng mag-vary, time. Pero ang pwedeng makuha lang natin is time. Okay? Pwedeng, uh, ang nag-vary lang sa impulse ay time. Kasi, yun lang po yung nag-change. Paano po kapag ka, nag-change din yung force natin? So, ang gagawin natin dyan, kailangan natin kunin yung average force. So, ano po yung equation ng average force? So, ang average force is equals to F1 plus F2. Yan, para lang tayo nag-mean over 2. So, I is equals to F average times delta T. Okay? So, ano average from 0 to 10? 0 plus 100 over 2. Okay? Times delta T, 10. Okay? So, ano yung impulse dito? Impulse dito, 100 divided by 250 times 10 500 newton second. Okay? Same lang din po yung gagawin natin sa C. F av lang din yung gagamitin na natin. I is equals to F average times delta T. Okay? So, 50 plus 100 over 2 times 10. Okay? 150 plus... Uh, 150 over 2 is 75 times 10, 750 newton second. Okay? Tanong po, mga kapatid. Clarifications. Tesla? So, yan. So, ganun lang po kadali mag-solve ng problems regarding momentum. So, kapag kunwari momentum impulse, pag dumami na yung objects natin, kukunin na natin yung total momentum. So, now, let's move on with the third part, which is collision. Okay? So, yung collision, ito yung pagbabanggaan at pagsasalipukan ng dalawang object. Okay? The collision of a body changes the particle's velocities. Okay? Kung nagbanggaan siya or may nakabanggaan siya na isa pang particle, pwedeng magbago yung velocity ng dalawang particle na yun. Okay? So, the kinetic energies of an individual particles will also change. As well as it's... When we have a change in velocity, magbabago din po yung kinetic energy niya. Okay? Meron tayong dalawang klase ng collision. We have elastic collision. So, dito, sa elastic collision, when objects collided without being permanently deformed and without generating heat. Okay? So... Kailan nag-occur ang elastic collision? Elastic collisions occur kapag ka nagkaroon ka na nagbangka ang object tapos naghiwalay sila after. Okay? Katulad nito, uh, dalawang ball, green at yellow, nagbanggaan. Okay? So, kapag naghiwalay sila, uh, hindi sila nagdikit, it is elastic collision. Okay? We have perfectly in, uh, elastic collision 
but it almost never occur. Okay? Heat is uh, usually generated with collision. So, energy is transformed out of the system. Okay? Kapag meron tayong elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. Meaning, na-transform po yung ating energy. Okay? Next type of collision is we have inelastic collision. Okay? Inelastic collision is when after colliding objects, uh, they stick together and travel off as one object. Okay, dito mas close yung dalawang object. Kasi after colliding, after nilang magsalpuka, nagdikit sila. Okay, for two objects in an elastic collision, ito yung equation na ginagamit natin. Momentum ng unang object plus momentum ng ikalawang object is equals to the combined momentum of objects 1 and 2. Okay? Or M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equals to M1 plus V1 times their final velocity. Okay? Kasi bakit po isang velocity na lang? Kasi same lang din naman yung magiging velocity ng dalawang particle na yun kasi magkadikit sila. Okay? So we have the conservation of momentum okay the con uh, conservation of momentum states that impulse and momentum concepts can be applied to collision the total momentum just before the collision yung m1 v1 natin is equal to the mo uh, total momentum after the collision meaning um na conserve natin yung value na take into place pa rin or hindi nagbago yung value before and after. That, that is um, what the conservation of momentum means. Uh, the, the amount of momentum from or before collision is the same as the amount of momentum after collision. Okay? The total momentum of the system is conserved. So, so collisions, meron tayong dalawang equation kapag elastic m1 v1 uh, sorry kapag dalawa dalawang object lagi ito ha kapag collision walang collision ay isang object lang m2 v2 is equals to m1 v1 prime meaning the final velocity of uh, the first object lagyan na lang natin ng prime plus m2 v2 Prime. Okay? Kapag elastic collision. Kapag inelastic collision naman, kapag pareho silang uh, nagkadikit sila after, dito, naghiwalay. Okay? Naghiwalay yung dalawang object, kaya meron po tayong dalawang final velocity. Dito kay inelastic, nagsama. Okay? Nagsama sila. So, yung equation natin, M1 V1 plus M2 V2. Okay. After the collision, M, uh, labas na natin, the M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2. Okay. Based from this equation. Pero since nagsama sila, M1 is equals to M1 uh, V1 prime is equals to V2 prime is equals to the final velocity. Okay? So, kaya pwedeng magamit natin yung equation M1 V1 plus M2 V2 so it equals to Vf okay, labas na natin M1 plus M2. Okay? Nag-gets po ba yun, mga kapatid? Kung bakit naging ganito yung equation kay inelastic uh, compared kay elastic collision? Okay? Question, mga kapatid. Okay, so kay inelastic collision, energy or kinetic energy is not conserved. So, uh, uh, hindi po na-conserve yung Ke kay uh, inelastic, inelastic collision. So, magkakaroon po tayo ng another equation kapag ka sa kin in terms of kinetic energy na yung hinahanap natin. Okay, one half kinetic energy Okay? Kinetic energy nung una nating object plus kinetic energy nung ikalawa nating object 
is equal to the kinetic energy ng ating unang object after the collision plus kinetic energy ng ikalawa nating object after the collision. So kung i-expand natin to, one half m1 d1 squared, okay? Kasi ang equation po ng kinetic energy ay one half m b squared plus one half m2 v2 squared, okay? Is equal to one half m 1 v1 prime squared. Don't forget the prime. The prime means here is after plus 1 half m2 v2 prime squared. Okay? So, ito yung uh, kinetic energy for inelastic uh, collision. Okay? So, let's try this um Dito sa isang sample problem. Abot pa naman siguro may 7 minutes pa tayo. A 10 kilogram box slides on a horizontal frictionless surface at 8 meters per second. It strikes another uh, 7 kilogram box. Uh, what is the final speed after it slides together after collision? Okay? It slides together meaning this is inelastic. Collision. Okay? So, i-ano natin? Meron daw tayong 10 kg na box. Tapos, meron tayong 7 kg na box. Itong 10 kg natin, moving at a speed of 8 meters per second. Okay? It's like another it strikes another 7 kilogram box this is this is uh, at rest so its velocity is 0 meters per second okay what is the final speed no 10k ayan bago na yung size nag deform Okay, ano daw yung uh, collision or ano daw yung final speed after collision kapag nag-slide daw sila together. Okay? So this is in elastic collision kasi nagtabi sila. Okay? Or nagsama sila. So in elastic collision, M1V1 plus M2V2 is equals to Vf okay, times M1. Plus M. So, ito ay base dito sa equation natin na to, ha? Okay? So, substitute natin yung mga values. Ang mass natin is 10. Ang velocity niya is 8. Okay? Plus, yung mass natin is 7. Since at rest, velocity is 0. Okay? Is equals to final velocity, our unknown, yung mass ng 1 natin, 10 plus 7. Okay? So, cancel out na natin to. 80 is equals to VF 17. 10 plus 7. Divide both sides by 17. What would be the value of our final velocity? Okay? The final velocity would be equal to 4.71 meters per Second. Okay? Any question? Tesla? Clarifications? Yan. Okay, so may nahanap akong organic chemistry na um, problem solving. So, yun na lang po yung ipopost ko para hindi na, hindi na kayo mag-antay ng recording ko. Kasi baka matagal pa yung tagalized version ng organic chemistry. So, yan. Um, I-post ko na lang dun sa Google Classroom. Okay? May tanong po ba tayo? Okay? So, again, take note lang, kapag elastic, naghiwalay. Kapag inelastic, nagsama sila after collision. So, ang momentum ng object, nakadepende sa mass niya, tsaka sa velocity. The impulse is the change in uh, momentum. It is also force and time. Okay? Tapos yung center of mass natin is uh, uh, 
depends on the mass and the distance of the object in uh, sa, sa horizontal plane or sa vertical plane. Anyway.